praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time. Yes, um, it's a beautiful day. I've been introduced. So I don't want to go back to introducing myself. All I can say is that um, one of my children is here, I believe. If he's there, please um, just wave your hand. I need to know. Yes, I see him over there. Yeah, that's the last born. And um, I've been saying at the end of this year, we'll have five IDs in the house. And we can't have five ID, IDs, and only two people are paying the bills. Is it fair? So we'll have a family meeting at the end of this year to Jue. Yes. All right. Um, before we begin our, sub, our sermon, I'd like us to just close our eyes and just commit our hearts and commit the word. And almighty and everlasting Father, we come before you this morning. We acknowledge you only as God. And who can fathom your infinite wisdom? Who can tell the depths of your love? You are beautiful beyond description. Mighty God, you are enthroned on high. And this morning as we sit at your feet, dear Lord, we hunger for you. We are thirsting for you, O oh God. And, in, and Lord, we pray that even as your word says that if we knock, the door shall be opened. Here we are, O oh God, standing in the need of prayer. Holy Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, take preeminence in this place. Speak to us, refresh us, teach us, and guide us. We commit ourselves to you, God. And Father, we pray that concerning our minds and our thoughts, we are subjecting them to the power of the Holy Spirit. We are taking every thought captive right now to the obedience of Christ. Speak to us, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Uh, let's go straight to the word. And um, this year, the year 2024, for those of you perhaps who are getting to hear this for the very first time, or even to those of us who've had it before, it's good to remember that this, for us as a ministry, is the season of open doors. The season of open doors. This is the word that the Lord gave us as a ministry for this year. And today, under that theme, the season of open doors, I want to speak to somebody who is looking at their life. And today, being the first Sunday of the second half of 24, 24 you are looking at your life. You are looking at your family. You are looking at your business. Or maybe even at your studies. And you're asking yourself, is there any hope? Is there any hope? Yes, it's the season of open doors. But as far as my life is concerned, is there any hope? And so today I want us to... Um, to look at this topic, this subtitle, that's the title of our, of our message today, it is a question, is there any hope? And when we talk about hope, um, you know this morning I was remembering something, yesterday there was a football match for those of you who love football, I have people who love football in my house, and I know some of you were hoping that your team would win. And you are disappointed. And today that's not the kind of hope that we are talking about. We are talking about biblical hope. What is hope? Maybe we can start by, you know, just getting to know what is this other kind of hope. You know, that one of saying, I hope hakuta nyesha. I hope, I hope, I hope I won't get late to work. That's not the kind of hope we are talking about. We want to look at biblical or godly hope. And the description that I came up with is that godly hope is an aggressively 
positive attitude. Aggressively positive attitude that says God is working in my life and I'm expecting something good to happen. Aggressively positive attitude that God is working in my life and that I'm expecting something good to happen. Now this kind of hope, it is in the confidence that you have that things will improve. And this kind of hope connects us with the possibility of a tomorrow that is full of opportunities and fulfillment. Biblical hope, if you don't remember anything else, remember that biblical hope is based on the promise and the character of God. It is based on the promise and the character of God. So when God gives us a word and he says this is the season of open doors, your hope should be based on this promise and the, the, on the character of God because God is not a man that he should lie. Praise the name of the living God. Amen. Now I want us to look at um, this person who is asking themselves, is there any hope? Is there any hope? This is somebody who has lost hope. We are talking about hopelessness. Hopelessness. Now, hopelessness is a negative attitude. It is the opposite of the godly hope. You have such a negative attitude. And sometimes, I don't blame you, life is hard. Life can hit you and hit you so hard. Or sometimes you've been in a situation and it's taken so, so long. You've just seen one bad thing happen from one bad thing to another. That you are afraid to hope because you don't want to be disappointed again. Perhaps it's in a relationship. Every time you meet somebody and you feel like this is the one. And you end up getting disappointed. Or sometimes you're really looking forward to God doing something in your life. And then it happens. And then you end up getting disappointed. There are very many biblical examples about people who were disappointed. They became hopeless. And if there's one man of God in the Bible that I rethink about when I think about this, it is David. When David had gone to war in Ziklag and he has won the battle, but when he gets back home, there is nothing. His wife taken captive. Everything was taken, was, had, had gone. And the Bible says that David wept until he could weep no more. Can you imagine a man who's come from victory, he gets back home to the camp and he is so disappointed. He is so hopeless. And it is at this point that we get that scripture that we love so much where the Bible tells us and David encouraged himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now hope and faith work together. You know, and it can get very confusing. Hope and faith. These two work together. And um, where there's hopelessness in your heart, when you feel hopeless, your faith lacks direction. Hopelessness. Hopelessness makes your faith lack direction. And so when I was trying to think about, so what, what are these two things that you can say are inseparable? You know, a more practical example. And uh, I thought about, I can't believe I thought about this because um, it's something to do with chemistry. And it was one of the subjects I did not do very well in. And, uh, but you know, you know how we like asking at where will I use it in my life? Now here it is. I remembered when we were being taught about water, we used to call it H2O, H2O, that, um, let me read so that I don't say my own things, that a water molecule has three atoms. A water molecule has three atoms, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now this is what we call H2O. Now, if you remove the oxygen or the hydrogen, you don't have water. 
they have to be they have to be combined to form that molecule of water that is what hope and faith is they go hand in hand you can't say you have faith and you have no hope you can't say you have hope and you have no faith they must go together and so now i'd like us to look at our anchor scripture because um, this is an issue we need to deal with hopelessness because hopelessness is becoming a deadly problem in our nation we are seeing very many people getting depressed we are seeing very many people commit suicide and so our scripture comes from the book of ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1 to 11 in the new king james version ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 11 and i want us to read um the entire scripture very fast nigel if you could project that for us please yes and so this is ezekiel and it says that the hand of the lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones then he caused me to pass by them all around and behold there were very many in the open valley and indeed they were very dry and he said to me son of man can these bones live so i answered "O lord god you know again he said to me prophesy to these bones and say to them oh dry bones hear the word of the lord thus says the lord god to these bones surely i will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live i will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live then you shall know that i am the lord so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied there was a noise and suddenly a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone indeed as i looked the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them over but there was no breath in them also he said to me prophesy to the breath prophesy son of man and say to the breath thus says the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe on this lane that they may live so i prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceedingly great army verse 11 then he said to me son of man these bones are the whole house of israel they indeed say our bones are dry our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off our bones are dry our hope is lost and we ourselves are cut off and today i want us to think about our lives and the area in which you're trusting god to open a door but this is what you are saying to yourself our bones are dry my hope is lost it's been so long as you have seen uh, ezekiel has gone has been taken in a vision and he's in a valley and there are bones and the bible says there were very many and they were very dry so it means that the people when you, those bones the people those bones belonged to they were long dead rotten and all that was left were bones and so you're looking at your life and your situation and you're saying god you're saying this is the season of open doors but these bones are dry so dry it's been so long god my hope is gone it is dry it is so dry and so here you are and everybody seems to be rejoicing but you lost your hope because your situation looks beyond repair i am here to tell you that we serve a god who calls on those things that be not as though they are we serve a god that is able to call dead bones back to life and i believe one of the reasons that possibly god made ezekiel go around looking at the bones those that are teachers will tell you 
that um, when teachers are teaching, sometimes they want to show visual. Vi they want to use visual objects. When a teacher is teaching, especially in the younger classes, they tell them this is a ball. And they show them a ball. That creates an image in your mind. And you tend to remember. You tend to remember. So we are seeing Ezekiel in this vision and he's going around and he's looking at these bones. And the Bible says that these bones were very many and they were very dry. And so it doesn't matter how long you have been in that situation. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. I mean, maybe you're looking at me and you're saying, you don't know how bad it is. You don't know how long I've waited for God. But I want to tell you, if God said it, he will do it. Praise the name of the living God. And so the Bible tells us in verse 3 where he's asked that God asks him, son of man, can this bones live? And so he answers and says, so I answered, oh Lord, you know. So he didn't, he didn't give a direct answer concerning himself. One of one, one of the points that I came to learn from this scripture is that Ezekiel had hope in God, not in the bones. He did not want them to discuss the issue of the bones. But he knew that God, if there is anybody that can bring back these bones back to life, it has got to be God. It has got to be God. And I like this answer. You know, every time God asks a question, he asked the man who was sitting beside the pool if he wanted to be healed. Wasn't it obvious? Yeah. God is all-knowing. There's nothing he doesn't know. Even that answer you are about to give, he already knows. So he asked him, son of man, can these bones live? And he answered and said, only you, God, only you know and so we continue. We go to the next verse. Let's go to verse number four. Verse number four. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, can you imagine if somebody found you somewhere talking to bones, bones, hifupa, you are talking to them, speaking to them. The first thing we note about Ezekiel is that he obeyed. He obeyed what the Lord had told him. And so in this season of open doors, obedience is key. Obedience to the instructions that God gives you regardless of how ridiculous they might sound. Obedience is key. He did not use his own words. He said exactly what he said. And he spoke the word of God over the bones. And so I'd like to tell you concerning that situation that you're going through, speak the word. Speak the word of God concerning what you're going through. You know, the Bible has scriptures concerning everything and every situation. You know, I found a very interesting scripture. <laughs> I didn't know, but imagine there's even a scripture in the Bible that says, Imagine Imagine about such things. Yeah, don't, don't keep visiting your neighbor at every now and then before you enter your house. You must enter your neighbor's house. It's in Proverbs. And ladies, you know this is Royal Sunday. Allow me to digress for a minute. There's that scripture in the book of Proverbs. And it says that you will weary them. Don't keep visiting kila siku. So anyway, my point is, there is a scripture concerning every situation in your life. And so Ezekiel prophesied to the bones and he told the bones to hear the word of God. And the reason that even bones, inanim an inanimate object, can hear the voice of God, it's because it is God who created everything. Colossians 1.16 says that in him all things were created. Things in heaven and things on earth. Things that are visible, things that are invisible. Whether they are thrones 
or powers or principalities or rulers. They were created through him and for him. Everything was created by God and everything is for him. And that is why even when bones, when bones had the word of God, they had no option but to respond. So you need to look up scriptures concerning your situation. Is it healing? Look for scriptures concerning healing and speak those scriptures over your situation. And that is exactly what um, Ezekiel did. And so we go to the next verse. Let's go to verse 5. The verse 5, it tells us, Thus says the Lord to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Now, if you note what has happened in verse 5, the first thing he says, if we go back to verse 5, the Lord said, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. That's the first instruction. Now, let me tell you, this does not happen until verse 10. What God says in verse 5 does not happen until we get to verse 10. Let me tell you, by, when God looks at you, he says you are more than a conqueror even before you step into battle. Even before you step into a situation, God assures you that you will come out of it more than a conqueror. He assures us in his word that even when you go through the rivers of difficulty, even when you go through the fire, you will not be consumed. He gives you an assurance even before you get into that situation. So don't give up hope. God has already worked it out. Even when you can't see it, God is working it out. Even when you can't see it, God is working it out. Even when you can't feel it, God is working it out. Even before you see the result, believe that God is working it out. And it is, will work out for your good. Because no eye has seen and no ear has had, neither has it entered even in your heart the plans that God has in store for you in this season. Praise the name of the living God. And so he says, I will put sinews in you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you that you shall, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God wants to be glorified in your situation. He says that he will do all this, then you shall know that I am the Lord. You will know that he's God. You will know that if this has come to pass, it has got to be God. And it reminded me about this um, scripture in the book of uh, John, where Jesus is told that his friend Lazarus is sick. John, that we find in John chapter 11, verse 4 to 6, for those who are taking notes. And so Jesus, a messenger is sent to Jesus. And he's told Jesus, him whom that you love is sick. He is very sick. And the Bible says, the first thing that he said, when he heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, for those of you who are conversant with this, with this um, story, you will know that Lazarus even ended up dying. He even ended up dying and he was put in the tomb. But the first thing that what he had said, Jesus had said was, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. The reason that what you're going through is taking so long is that the Son of God will be glorified through it if you choose to hold on to God, if you choose not to get hopeless about it, hold on to God. And you know, uh, verse 5 says that when, that now, please, yeah, now Jesus loved Martha 
and her sister Lazarus. Verse 6. So when he heard he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now you tell me, who does that? Who does that? You're told your friend is very sick. But the Bible says, now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So he stayed two more days. Who does that? You know, the tendency is to run, to go immediately. But Jesus stayed two more days. He wanted it to get so bad. He wanted the body to get dead and stinky. So that anybody, anybody who would have questioned that Lazarus was not completely dead. That this having been dead for four days, I am sure everybody was convinced that this is definitely a miracle. And so maybe you're looking at yourself and people are just giving testimonies about how their doors have been opened. You are there and you're thinking, God, have you forgotten me? What is happening? Is it that my prayers are not the right prayers? Is it that I don't have enough faith? But the Bible says that Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And so he stayed two more days. Let me tell you, God loves you. It's not taking long because he doesn't love you. It's not taking long because he doesn't care. He loves you. But when God comes through for you, it will be without any reasonable doubt that the hand of God has done it. Praise the Lord. Everybody will know and they will, be, they will know that if this has happened for so and so, it has got to be God. So don't give up hope. So we move on. And um, verse 7, let's go to verse 7 now. He says, so I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and flesh came up upon them and skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. So he has done, remember these are the instructions that he was given, and he has done that. And so he goes, can you imagine? He goes, he looks at the bones, and he starts speaking to the bones. And says, you bones, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. And so I want as you, as you pray in your prayer closet, speak. Speak to your situation. Speak. If it is your, if a relationship, speak over it. If it is your finances, speak over them. The Bible says that as he was speaking, and he was saying, hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. The bones started coming back together. The bones are coming together. The skeletons. Then there's a rattling. I don't know whether you have that sound. Did you have, okay. Ebu waka, you're rattling to scare, please. There was a rattling. A rattling. A rattling. A rattling. A rattling. The bones are coming together. The bones are coming together. The bones are coming together. The skeleton is forming. Can you imagine it is in a valley? The Bible says that the, the bones were very dry and there were very many. Now, I came to understand that a, an adult, an adult, eh, has about 206 bones. You have like 206 bones. So, can you imagine these are very many bones? So, the skull... And Karoga's skull has to, call, has to look for the neck. It has to look for the neck. It can't, can you imagine now me with my height? If I got uh, Reverend Emily's right leg, you get. So the, the bones are moving and they are locating, they are locating their partners. They are locating their partners and the skeleton is coming together. There is a rattling. The bones are moving. The bones are moving. And then the smallest bone in a human being, an adult, they are called staples. I came to learn it is a very small, it is 0 0.1 inches, 2 to 3 millimeters, very tiny bone. It is found inside your middle ear. So can you imagine those very tiny bones? 
they have to look, locate you. The one that is supposed to be in your right ear goes into your right ear. The one that goes into your left ear goes into your left ear. Now, let me tell you, this taught me that God is such a God of order. God is so organized. He was not going to start with breath before the skeleton, before the muscles, before the flesh, before the skin. Our God is a God of order. So in the season of open doors, you have got to get organized. Get organized. Get organized. Get organized. If you're trusting God, for example, maybe for a business, all right? You need to know what kind of business is this that I want to get into. What kind of business? Where will this business be? Where will this shop be? What do I need? Who are my customers? Let me tell you, men and women of God, faith is not foolishness. It's not foolishness. You need to get organized. You know, have, have you seen how when people win like a prize money in Kenya, maybe somebody has won 50,000 and I'm, then they present the check. And utafanya nini na pesa? Anasema, maybe it's 50,000. Anasema, nitalipia watoto school fees? Nakuanga ya kwanza. Nitajangia wazazi wangu nyumba? Eh, nita, nitajijangia nyumba? Na nitaanza biashara. 50,000. Yes, that one. Kwanza nitalipa school fees. Nitajenga nyumba. Nitaanza biashara. It is standard. So sometimes, you know, when people say some things and you wonder, is, have you put some thought into it? Okay, you don't have to tell people the whole world the truth. But my point is this, that in this season of open doors, maybe you are trusting God for a marriage partner. You want to get married. You, you need to get organized, all right? You need to get organized. In fact, God himself did not create Adam and Eve until there was a garden. Imagine there had to be food. There had to be food before he created Adam and before he created Eve. So get organized. Get yourself a job, brother. If you want a girl, get yourself a job. She needs to eat. If you're a lady, no, it's not just for men. No man wants a lady who just sits and waits for him to, so it, to provide. Yes, yeah, so work on yourself. Get yourself a job. Get responsible. Position yourself for the kind of person that you want. You can't be saying you want a person with all these qualities and you're not working on yourself. You are not preparing yourself. You are not working on yourself to be the kind of person that that man or that woman would want. So in the season of open doors, get organized. We have seen that our God is an organized God. He put the skeleton together. Then he put the flesh. Then he put the skin on it. And so um, we go to verse 9. Let's go to verse 9 and verse 10. And then it says, and also he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds of breath and breathe on this lane that they may live. Verse 10 says, so I prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them. And they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. He's told to prophesy to the wind. And if you remember the, uh, when Jesus spoke to his disciples before he ascended into heaven, he told them to wait until they receive power. And so in Acts chapter number 2, we see the disciples... And they hear, they were praying, and there was a sound like the sound of a mighty wind. The wind of the Holy Spirit. The wind of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. This is the power of every believer. The power of the Holy Spirit. And that is the last thing. That God did as he's giving Ezekiel these instructions. He says prophesy to the breath. Let me tell you brothers and sisters in the season of open doors. You will not make it without the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Uh, the amplified version 
tells us, um, where is that scripture? The Amplified Version tells us that, um, this, no, I will get to that. But the Holy Spirit is our counselor. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. The Holy Spirit is our strengthener. You cannot make it in this season, in this season of open doors without the help of the Holy Spirit. Don't give up hope. Maybe you've been relying on your own strength. That's why it's been getting difficult for you. But if you rely on the help of the Holy Spirit, you will make it. You will make it through. It is the Holy Spirit that strengthens you from day to day. He keeps you. He encourages you. He comforts you. He teaches you. He directs you. So don't give up hope. Don't give in to the feeling of hopelessness. Because you have a helper. You are not alone. You have the help of the Holy Spirit. And now to conclude, I only have three points and we'll be done with this. And I want to tell you that as long as you're alive, there is hope for you. As long as you're alive, every morning you wake up and you open your eyes, there is hope. There is a reason God has still kept you alive. Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 1 to 23 tells us, I love what Jeremiah says. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 21 to 23. Verse 21, please. And this he says, he says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. There are things you need to recall to your mind. That through the Lord's mercies, verse 22, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We serve a faithful God. He has new mercies for you every day. When you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes and you're alive, there is hope. There are new mercies for you that day. You don't need to rely or depend on the mercies that he gave you yesterday. He has new mercies every morning. And he compass his compassions never fail. He is a faithful God. He releases new masses, new strength for new trials, for new challenges every single day. And the next point is this. I want to tell you that God has a plan for your life. God has a plan for your life. Maybe you're wondering, so where does this difficulty, where does it lie in my life? God has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He says, for I know, I know, God himself is saying, he says, I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Do not lose hope. There is that one again. He has good thoughts concerning you. He is thinking about you. And the thoughts that he has for you are thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you, imagine God himself is saying that his plans and his thoughts are to give you a future and to give you a hope. So don't give in to the feelings of hopelessness. You have a God who has a plan for your life and you have a God who has kept you alive because of this plan that he has for you. Now, the last one, I want to tell you that regardless of what you're going through, you have an anchor. You have an anchor. You know, the anchor is what, um, when the sheep, the sheep, uh, merely, you know, when they are, can I call it packing, right? So they use an anchor that is thrown deep into the water it, until it is embedded in the rock to hold on to it so that it's not carried away by, by the water. So I've come to tell you, child of God, you have an anchor. Ukonananga. Ile inakushikilia. 
what is holds you so that even when the waves and the wind and the storm is tossing you to and fro, life is moving you from one bad situation to another, we have an anchor. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 19 in the Amplified Version. And I want to show you the kind of anchor that you have. Now we have this hope, the hope that comes from God. As a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, it cannot, please let's read this, those, you see those words in brackets? Let's read them together. It cannot, and it cannot down under whoever steps out upon it. In fact, this, the version I had says that it does not break down. It cannot slip. It cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. We have an anchor in God. It doesn't matter the pressure. It doesn't matter the pressure upon it. It cannot slip. It cannot break down under whatever pressure bears upon it. So you cannot afford to walk with your head down as a child of God. You have an anchor that keeps your soul steadfast and sure. That even when the wind blows and the waves come and you're tossed to and fro, you need to know that how tazama, you will not drown. God will ensure that you come out of it, that you come out victorious, that he receives the glory because he says that you are more than an overcomer. You are more than a winner. This is the kind of God that we serve. And so we thank God and we bless the Lord for this word. And I hope that you are encouraged. I hope that you know that regardless of what happens to you, even from today, in this second half, at whatever point in your life, these are the kind of scriptures that you need to, to keep in your heart because life happens. Life happens to everybody. In fact, hey, Job says, Job, he says, who is that scripture? Job 14 verse 1, man who is born of woman, man, here it did even woman, it's not gender. He says, man who is born of a woman is of few and full of trouble. So trouble will come at some point in your life. But rest, rest assured that you have an anchor, an anchor for your soul. And so at this point, I'd like us to just bow down our heads. And I just want us to pray. And I want you to just look at your life and at your situation. And I just want you to commit your life to God and say, Father, here I am standing in the need of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you because you are not a man that you should lie. That what you have said, you will do. And what you have spoken, you will make it good. And Father, we thank you for the word that you gave us as a church and as a ministry. That this is our season of open doors. And we look to you, God. We look to you, Abba Father, because you alone are God and what you say is what you do. You are God who is watching over your word to perform it. Father, you know our lives. You know what we are going through. We know that you know the challenges that we are experiencing. You know the condition and the situation of our hearts. Where we have been on the verge of giving up. Where we have been on the verge of saying that we cannot hold on anymore. We are praying for new strength today. We are praying that our Father, that you would renew our spirit. That you will strengthen our hearts to hold on to you. Because you are our anchor. The anchor that never sleeps. The anchor that never gives in to whatever amount of pressure. We thank you, Lord. Strengthen us. Walk with us, oh God. Because without you, we can do nothing. We pray that the Holy Spirit, who is our helper, always by our side, living on the inside of us, as we face the battles in life. We thank you because you call us more than conqueror. We thank you because we 
know that we are more than overcomers. We thank you because we know we are coming out victorious. We thank you because tonight you are to Nabeba Bendera ya Ushindi. Tukisema ya kwamba wewe ni Mungu. Na umetushindania. Na umetupigania. Receive our praise, receive our glory. And thank you, Father, for today. As we live our Father, we pray that we shall not just be heroes of your word, but that we shall be doers of it. Father, mixing it with faith that we may obtain results. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.